even though my focus group, I think you guys are all nice to each other. I think you guys do a really good job working together when we have to. We, we had a real big division. What was the division? Guys and girls. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, it was, it was that we have only three girls and we have, you know, nine boys, and that makes it hard to be a girl in our group. And I, I wanted to make sure that you guys all realize that, you know, there's no reason for girls to be sitting at one table, boys to be sitting at the other table. So we, we would like to have one caring adult and one advocate for every student in our building, and those students understand that that's their advocate. Every member of our staff has a student. Even the teachers who do not have home rooms, they have, a, they have students, five through eight. Uh, they're like three members of each class that, that actually will be in their class. So they're around 12 students that they have. Instead of 20, or 21 or 22 like you'd have in a regular home room and those kinds of things. Uh, it makes it much more uh, available for them to, to work with them. Oh, horse. My That focus group. They'll stay through their 5th grade, 6th grade, 7th and 8th grade year in the focus group. Because it's not academically paired up, allows just one more opportunity for a child to have some sort of an advocate for them in a setting outside of their academic settings. Uh, if a student comes into focus and is talking particularly about having difficulties with a particular teacher or in a particular subject area, um, having difficulty in peer relationships, something that may or may not come up or may or may not be able to be observed during the regular day, you know, the, the, through the process of education, going from class to class. That, that focus group is another opportunity or another place where students can go and, and express their concerns and maybe have some of their social and academic needs met. We started out by working on uh, student-led conferencing and how their students were going to conference with their parents and show them their portfolios and what they were doing within their work in their work days. So we used that as a, a kind of a stepping stone to work on that for these teachers to be able to work with the kids and have some focus for them to work on. The students were able to see a value in that. They were able to see a value in their work and also spend some time with this individual who's go w that we hope would become in the four years that they have them because they're going to stay with that person for four years would become a, uh, an advocate and feel comfortable in going to them uh, if they need to. The adolescents, even though they're pushing adults away in their life at that time, they want to be more independent. It really is the most important time that they have an, an adult advocate. Why? Because that has to be an Okay. Well, you could you, just cut Did you write down what ghettos were? We lose a few eighth graders, we get a few fifth graders. So they stay, they stay with us bless our hearts for four years if they start as fifth grade with us. So they get to know us and we get to know them and parents get to know us through the focus group. Some kids don't get many good connections, you know, any contact with people that care and some of the homes are really horrendous and so we try to make those kind of contacts, see them every day, show that we're interested in their activities. If they're on a team we try to, you know, support them or they're an, an academic activity, we support them, even though we may not see them in the classroom. We can always improve on what we do, but I really think it's a wonderful start to, to connecting with kids. Kids need somebody that they, that they feel that, that cares about them. And if they have that, it's a, it's a major, major, major step in their life.